Hello and welcome to the Heresy Lodge. I am your host, Dylan Cooper, the Constant Coast over here. Gavin Franklin. Guys, we are here this week to preview the Fury of Agnes. You may ask, guys, this is like eight page book. Why are you previewing it? And it's because well, we fucking can. All right. First off, neither of us have finished it. We're, <laughs> we're both like halfway. And we talked about this last week and how like GW making volume 36 of Din and the Death really put a wrinkle in things. So we aren't going to try to kill ourselves to get through it. To get no need to rush. <laughs> yeah. We don't even know what we're planning on doing afterwards yet. <laughs> no, because we're going to have like a year. <laughs> yeah. So let's just take it slow to <laughs> see what happens. So the yeah. next book gets released in November. By that time, even still, we're going to be almost to it. Yeah. So I'm we'll see saying. what happens. I mean, maybe we just start making three episodes a book. Maybe we just fall off a cliff. I don't know. Mortis, we might have to make some extra episodes for uh, Mortis and Warhawk and Echoes of Eternity. Mortis, I imagine, just because it's going to be like 45 minutes of us bitching. I, I imagine. I know nothing about the book other than the cover, and that it makes, makes me think we're going to bitch. <laughs> the title is about one of the Titan Legios. Yeah, it's not looking pretty. Mm-mm. But yeah, if we do that, then we'll actually get to the end. If we do three episodes per book and one episode on Garo, that puts us at the end of the Death Volume 1 by the time we will probably receive the end of the Death Volume 2. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah we'll see what happens or yeah we we started winging this podcast we might as well end winging this podcast right we'll see what see what it goes Gavin, I, i'll go to our other shit first um guys go to our discord find that pin to our twitter at heresy lodge emails at the heresy lodge at gmail.com buy some merch it's i um it feeds my child maybe get gavin a house up here so we can hang out more interest rates are high guys he needs the dough they're pretty nuts. What else we got? Um, YouTube, the Heresy Lodge. Those are the things. Gavin, what are you drinking? Drinking another wine. I, uh, I'm i a little hungover today, honestly, on a Thursday. <laughs> after a uh, trivia night. Um, so wine, I find wine a lot easier to drink as a, as a hangover drink than other uh, alcoholic beverages. Fair. Um, so I'm drinking a dry white wine called Woodwind from the winery Harmony Hill. This is a pretty cool winery. Um, How cool is it? It's just east of Cincinnati. It's like one of those wineries. It's like it's got a big event space, but it's like a relatively small business. And you walk up and there's like two dogs outside that greet everybody. Great time. Great time. Right. It wasn't 97 degrees. Phenomenal visit. Nice, nice. How's the wine itself? Is it top tier? It's dry. It's white. Pretty good. Good fam. Nice. You? Well, Gavin, it's that time of the year again. Oh, the, it is getting there. The September. best beers are flooding the shelves. We are in Oktoberfest season. So, I got to drink an Oktoberfest. And what Oktoberfest did I choose for this week? Well, it's got to be Old Faithful. The best one. I am bringing Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Honestly, I've had this one for about a year. <laughs> it's been sitting, been sitting for a while. Yeah, I did not go to the store and buy more. I already had some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to just kind of have have a stockpile of Sam at his Oktoberfest. <laughs> yeah, you just never know when you're going to need it. But sometime around September. It's definitely not in its prime right now. Um, it, ex- there, it expired in March. Expired? Yeah, beer expires. Beer expires? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it's freshness expires like technically it's fine to drink 
I've never heard of this before. How have I never heard of this? I don't know. Maybe I drink it too quickly. I don't know. <laughs> Five to nine months beyond the expiration date on the label at room temperature. That was probably room temp. Yeah, you're probably good. Yeah, I mean, if I die, I die. Yeah, I mean, fingers crossed. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just trying to make sure everyone's happy here, you know? Mm, bring out that same man as I Yep, so that's what we got. Old Faithful, great-ass beer. Well, I just love Oktoberfest beers. They're the best. Oktoberfest and pumpkin beers. My jam. You are a fan. You are a fan. Um, Fury of Magnus by Graham McNeil. This is Graham's second novella. Is it is it considered a novella? I don't think so, because it's like chapters. It kind of reads like Corax does, I guess. So it's like it's a novella, but it's like not a novella. I don't know. It is doesn't a feel like separate books. Is it a collection of short stories? Is that what novella is? Yeah. Then this wouldn't be one. It's all one story. Yeah, maybe this is just a book. A mini book? Tiny short, book. Short story is a big ass short story. It's like the weirdest length of novel. Like 250 pages. Yeah. I mean, it's basically a book. Like but... a little smaller than Ruin Storm. Like it does like the opposite thing that Graham McNeil does where it's like not that long. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. But it's about Ariman. It's about Magnus. It's about Vulcan. What? Yeah, we got Sally's. Some uh, space if, wolves. We have Olivia back, the perpetual from Vengeful Spirit. Lots of strange characters. No Lucius. And unfortunately, to my dismay, no shuriken. I thought that would have been a, a phenomenal story if he like finds his way into the Magnus story, and it would have made so much sense. But alas, I think we're gonna have to wait. Yeah, until that, that's a good point. Like, why? Like, I wonder if we ever get like the end of Shuriken's story of like why Magnus kept them back or kept him alive. Yeah, I mean, I've heard from Discord that the reasoning is because. Magnus wanted Shuriken to get that thing from Luna in order to use it to help rebuild his legion. The Alma Tomato. But in reality, that doesn't make a lot of sense because why would Magnus then let Shuriken just stay in uh, Space Rock <laughs> instead of picking him up with the Pharaohs, which he was right there to do in the book about Shuriken. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's for supposed to be after Magnus's big plans, right? I don't know. It just seems <laughs> very strange. There must be like some weird short story in the 40k universe involving Shuriken or involving the Magma, Magma Mater, whatever it is. And they just needed to do that. Again, I can't stand that. I wish that they would have continued to play with uh, Shuriken's character here in this story to tie in like how he s links with Magnus, how he links with the Thousand Sons, maybe even see a Shuriken Lucius rematch because we know That'd that cool. Lucius has been traveling with the Thousand Sons. A lot of really, really good opportunities for this book uh, to be really interesting. And uh, they just didn't do any of that. Yeah, I think like a Lucius, Shuriken fight and seeing Lucius's power after that fight would be a cool scene. That would have been great because we know that in 40k Lucius is he is Slanesh's chosen and his whole thing is like if Lucius dies whoever kills him to be becomes Lucius based off of pride and vanity. Yeah. But I uh, I just don't know if we're going to get that. I don't think we're going to get any of that with Lucius. I haven't okay. seen Lucius. The Emperor's Children ran away. Magnus is here. What is Lucius doing? Yeah, but he, he's just MIA. Yeah. He's just fucking. That's so sad, too, because he was such a cool character. Right from the onset of the Horse Heresy, he's been there since book one. He's been a character. Yeah, and he's been prominent like throughout the entire series. We see him in the storylines with the Emperor's Children. We see him in the storylines with the Thousand Sons. 
Uh, we see him in quite a few short stories. Like he's an interesting character. He's cocky as shit. He's a bad guy, but he's interesting. Yeah, um, and it's, it's like you kind of want him to win because he's he's also a badass. He is. Yeah, I mean, he killed all of Fulgrim's fucking honor guard in like a second, and then the honor guard never came back. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I I wish they would have done more Lucius. I think this would have been an amazing story to do it in, but I guess not. I guess not. Maybe we'll see Lucius. Maybe we'll see him later. I doubt it, but I'm not sure. End of the death part thirty six. Part thirty six. <laughs> Lucius is coming. <laughs> uh, we do, however, get to see Vulcan, which is a character I was not expecting to see in Wrath of Magnus. Now, at Fury. this point. Yeah, Fury. Sorry, I keep mixing it's, up. It's Fury very Magnus. important you get these right. <laughs> well, Wrath of Magnus used to be a secondary that a thousand sons could take. In <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. R.I.P. But, um, yeah, Vulcan. We haven't seen him yet. We're halfway through. I haven't actually seen Vulcan. I haven't either. Yeah. Only what's his face, whose name I can't even remember. Abademi? Abademi. Abademi. So we do see the three salamanders. The only three the Vulcan was like, all right, you guys with me. Not as everyone legion. else fucking sucks. You guys, you're you're cool though. Yeah. I say it's because you guys saw me, so I'm like, fuck. Yeah, I was planning <laughs> on going without everyone, but I guess since you're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh so Vulcan's still apparently in the basement. Uh maybe we'll, we'll get to see him the end of the book near the end of the book whole core of this story is magnus is attempting to break into the palace and this was revealed and i was like what is this magnus has decided that he wants to be emperor makes sounds just like him i mean he's he's cocky thinks he knows best I mean, out of nowhere to me, honestly. I was it like, is out of nowhere. What? He's like, fuck Horus. Fuck the Emperor. I'm the guy. Her rival can't do it. Angron sure as hell can't do it. No one wants to see Fulgrim do it. <laughs> Mortarian's weird. What are we going to do? Go look for Conrad Kurz? I'm going to be the Emperor. Yeah. Um, strange. I don't know if that plan's gonna work out you know i don't know a lot about 40k war but i don't think it's gonna go well <laughs> <laughs> yeah based off of what we do know how do you think do you think at this point in time magnus would make a better emperor than the emperor mm. i mean at this point i mean he's not sitting in a dungeon jerking himself off so maybe i mean who out of all the primarchs at this exact stage in, in the horse heresy they're in the siege are you like man i wish this person was actually in charge of everything i mean probably the two people that are actually in charge of everything right now with dorn and puerto rabo <laughs> <laughs> that's you guys that are doing everything <laughs> Turns out it actually worked out. <laughs> Dad's sitting in a chair and Dorn is ruling the place. I mean, obviously you have Saint. And a horse is sitting in a chair and Portorama's doing everything. Exactly. <laughs> obviously you have Sanguinius. Like I think Sanguinius is a good choice as well. Yeah. Um, but he's fucking crazy, apparently. He's just having visions of Angron. Yeah. Oh, we'd even we'd this is kind of go off course, but one thing we didn't talk about at the end of um, Saturnine is that they said that Nuceria is gone and the lion is on his way now. And <laughs> Angron didn't give a fuck about that. Why do we care? <laughs> Why is that the, a mission? <laughs> that scene was frustrating because when it, like Sanguinius talked to Dorn about it, and Dorn was like, no one's alive on my Syria. <laughs> <laughs> Angron already killed them all like 40 books ago, guys. <laughs> and Sanguinius was like, yeah, but I would imagine that the lion wanted to make it permanent. 
And if I was Dorn, I'd be like, well, fuck that guy. We need help. Tell him to stop going and blowing <laughs> rocks. We got shit we got to do. Hey, man, he, he blew up New Syria. He blew up Olympus. Oh, wait. Bordorabo dealt with his own problem. Oh, wait. What about Nostromo? Hmm. Uh, That's weird. But hey, it's fine. He blew up uh, Barbarous. Cool, cool, cool. Barbarous and uh, whatever the one. Whatever the one that Lorgar's from. No, no one gives a shit about that one either. No one cares. <laughs> I always meant to look up uh, what happened to uh, Chemos. Let me see if they have it. Post heresy. No, he doesn't blow up Chemos. Good job, Lion. But anyway. I just thought that was really funny. I can't believe we didn't talk about it because it was just like, why? <laughs> oh, that's annoying. Yeah, and like in this book, like, ah, they get get them in the line can show up any time. Like, they should already be there, <laughs> but they're both dicking around. I don't even know where, what Gilman's doing. Like, he wasn't like with the lion. He went to Beta Gammon. Like, what happened after Beta Gammon? Was he just like, I'm gonna go do something else for like? a year and i'll come back yeah exactly (laughs) so magnus is trying to not only get to the emperor to be the emperor he's also trying to find a part of his soul now you might be confused about the whole soul thing and you would be right (laughs) no it makes perfect sense so lehman russ killed magnus Mm mm-hmm But his soul was shattered into pieces across the galaxy. That's because he was so heartbroken. Sure. (laughs) Now Magnus is trying to collect them, right? I don't know if he was the one collecting them. Our man kind of did all the work, I think. And now he's saying there's one left? Yeah, we know that. Here in Terra. But don't we know that it's Arvita? Yeah. Sir, Sejanus. And he's in the warp. Right now, he's just on Titan. I don't think they've sent Titan into the warp yet. He can't be on Titan. Titan That's... is gone. Well, not, not gone, but like... Titan is the planet of the night. Grey Knights. So you don't think they sent it into the warp? I thought they did. Malkador is supposed to. Like That's a, like a whole thing, but... We haven't seen the evidence of that yet. Oh, I'm sure that they're just going to do that off book. Well, that makes no fucking sense, all right? I mean, yes, Malkador is allegedly sends Titan into the warp. And this is like, all right, you're not part of the siege. You are meant for more. I also have heard a rumor that Malkador also utilizes the Shard of Magnus to do something. Which makes less sense if that ends up being what happens. Because the shard is Arvita. It's the Janus. So, yeah, Arvita. <laughs> it's not Sejanus. Sejanus was a Luna Wolf. It turns into Sejanus, I'm pretty sure. So he becomes Sejanus? There's like... So there's two three, he, goes, he goes through like three name changes. Okay. So anyway, speaking of Malvador and some of the Grey Knights, we were shown a while back in Slaves to Darkness that Severin has returned from his random... Oh, sorry, that's the Jan- it's just Janus. Janus, okay. I think. So Severin returned from his random escapade with Olivia after um, Vengeful Spirit. Which is kind of crazy how he even got there. No one knows how he got there because he was on the ship with all the other Grey Knights at the end of Vengeful Spirit. And then, like he just randomly shows up on another ship and he kind of explains it like he told everyone he had to go for some reason. I don't know. It was really weird. Really strange why he showed up and was hanging out with Olivia. But yep. then he like randomly showed up at Terra and you're like, well, where the fuck is that perpetual lady that he was traveling with? It turns out <laughs> she's also on Terra. In the slums. <laughs> She's just in the slums. And like, 
at the beginning of this book, Malkador is like, oh, bring her to me. And I'm like, why didn't you do that? Like, day, why did she have to go to the slums first? Yeah, why did she have to like shave her and like her entire family's heads because they're fucking covered in lice? You would think if they're you, starving you know, to death. <laughs> if you're Malkador and you know that she's on Terra, I wouldn't be like, well, she can just fucking run around. I don't know why they didn't bring her to the palace. That'd make too much sense. That was very strange. Um, yeah, also, she, I'm curious if she, is she a real perpetual or is she a fake perpetual? I I'm would assume. I mean, she's a, one of the real ones, but like, you know, when she, she was working with the emperor. Yeah. Maybe. Which is strange. I want to talk about that, too. I want to go back to that. There's a discussion I wanted to have because this thought popped in my head. The girl, the perpetual from the last book, Isha. Yeah. She talked about how she believed perpetuals were just the next stage Ezra, in Ezra, human. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. She talked about how perpetuals are just the next stage in human evolution, like X Men. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. What about aliens that are perpetuals? Their evolution. But they are you saying that like all of the aliens across the galaxy are also like also are Eldar perpetuals? Question mark. They can, or can they only just make perpetuals? If they can make perpetuals, wouldn't they just make all of themselves perpetual? Because that sounds like a very Eldar thing to do. It does sound super <laughs> to do. Like clearly Eldrad knows Eldrad is a perpetual. Was he made into a perpetual? What's the process? Because that the one word bearer lady, she was fucking murdered. And then like there was a ritual that brought her back to life and then she magically became one and then she disappeared. But she kind of appeared in that one book, but it was never confirmed it was her. We thought it was, yeah. There was also this weird like moment. Where they talk, where they were talking about how like the emperor wanted to make perpetuals, so he made the primarchs. But we know the primarchs aren't perpetuals; it's Vulcan. just Vulcan. And he wanted to use her for like the female portion of the primarchs because she was a perpetual. Does that suggest that like? perpetualness is genetic it's just like maybe a super recessive set of traits and vulcan was just the only one that was successfully made into a perpetual yeah it's it really makes no sense because it's like well why didn't they just use purely the emperor's dna like why did they even bother with this with eshes like like at that point, like it sounds like they were just trying to fuck. Like he was just trying to find an excuse to fuck her. Like I don't know what else was the process there, but that's all it sounds like. You don't need a man and a woman to just do some DNA splicing, I don't think. But maybe you do. I don't know. I mean, he fucking made these people in tubes. Esha, we're trying to save humanity, and I've decided that the best way to do that, we have to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I know it seems crazy, but hear me out. So there's these things called the chaos gods. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I I want to fuck and have 20 babies <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> we can have more, but we need to have 20 sons and we'll just ask the girls. <laughs> <laughs> but you will provide me with only male heirs, <laughs> exactly 20 of them. <laughs> or you will see the noose. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so yeah, that got a little weird. Yeah, that, it just doesn't make any sense and why she was introduced. Also, another thing, there is a sister silence in this book. You know what's really weird, Gavin? People can fucking see her. Well, Graham also makes it a <laughs> weird point that the, the, the face thing yeah well it was just like the mask it's just the mask is hard you can't see her like her face mm. but he can see her going yeah the perpetual lady <laughs> was like reading her hand signals yeah 
And if someone is like, well, you can read her hands. It's like, what is everyone like? Are you telling me all the soldiers just saw <laughs> hands? <laughs> like, it's as, it's only body, no head. They're like, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> the Emperor is protecting us with mage hand. <laughs> a cantrip spell. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, we can see the Sisters of Silence. There's a scene in this book that Graham in combat, Graham does not do well with combat, in my opinion. I think he's one of the weaker authors when it comes to combat scenes. Yeah, I agree. I mean, just thinking the back of the fucking night battle where Horace absorbed the blow. That was pretty bad. That was a rough read. <laughs> And this one, Magnus uses his mind to lift what I can only assume is like an AT-AT from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And throws it out a wall and blows it up, which seems strange considering that they've been hitting that wall with guns from space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I fair. I guess if you just throw an AT-AT at it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was kind of crazy, and like time stopped, and there were big booms and all kinds of crazy stuff. But like, I don't know, it was very strange. Essentially, Magnus killed like thousands of thousand sons, is from what I got from it. Yeah, I like the cool thing about this book is like we're seeing characters we haven't seen in a while, characters that were introduced. And the one thing I will say that's I like about Graham. It's a it's a like and a dislike. He will introduce characters in short stories and then bring them in, and then we'll try to find a resolution for them. Yeah. Now it sucks for books like Vengeful Spirit, where it takes like thirty short stories. Yep. But like the Sherikin story was cool. Like we started in a book, ended in a half book. Mm -hmm. Fine with that. I think Graham would have preferred to do it differently. And I think based off yeah, of the right, way you write. 700 more pages for each book. <laughs> well, I think the way it is, is like, I, I can imagine Graham doesn't actually like writing short stories. Because they probably come to him and say, Graham, we need a short story. We need a short story. We need a short story. And instead of saying, okay, I'm going to write short stories like everyone else writes short stories. He goes, I'm going to write short stories with characters I'm going to use, which I respect. Yeah. I like that. I can imagine he probably wrote a majority of the short stories prequels to ventral spirit before he even wrote ventral spirit or maybe maybe even after but the fact of the matter is like he was like i'm going to use characters that exist that yeah. i've established to make the stories more interesting i like that yeah. um but yeah i'm it doesn't play well in a 75 book series because what it seems like is why are we writing all of this <laughs> Why are we making this book like a crux of complication in the middle of this entire series? Um, but I feel like in a smaller series where there's only 15 books and some short stories, it would have been a lot cooler. Vengeful Spirit would have been a lot cooler if it was a smaller series. For sure. Maybe. They fucking drew signals and crown on a ship where they probably have soap. It's a uh, chaos ship. They don't have any <laughs> soap on chaos ships. <laughs> I mean, don't they have like acid spit? They could probably just spit it off. I can only imagine what like being a crewman on a chaos ship is like. You know, it's just fucking <laughs> crazy shit going on. But there's still like the wash your hand sign in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Employees must wash their hand before returning to work. <laughs> hey, uh, we were hygienic here. <laughs> this isn't an emperor's children ship okay oh they no, probably I bet they have the best time. bathrooms <laughs> so clean like amazing showers they have like a person like standing there with like cold in the towel for them to like wash your hands and like give them a little spray of perfume <laughs> everyone gets checked for stds like every other week they're very very safe about <laughs> yeah yeah they don't they don't fuck with that shit <laughs> they know what they're doing they know the spaces they need. They know that they need a lot of soap. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this isn't a death guard ship. <laughs> yeah, they don't give a fuck. They're gross. Yeah. Weirdos. Yeah. Living in mold. Don't even turn on the fan in the bathroom. It's it's despicable. At least the Emperor's children have the decency to wash their hands. <laughs> it's the bare minimum, you know? Yeah. Uh, so... <clears throat> 
we do have uh, the three salamanders that we discussed. These salamanders are individuals who have been there since Vulcan lives. But for the life of me, the only one that I vaguely remember from Vulcan lives is Abadimi. Um, oh, actually, no, that's not true. Everyone from Vulcan lives dies except for Numian. Yeah, these are guys from. I mean, I think they might have introduced at the end of Deathfire. No, they were in Deathfire the whole time. Really? Yeah, these were like the main characters in Deathfire. Oh Fire. yeah, because Epidemi is like sucking on Numion's wang like the whole time. Yeah, and Death Numion's Fire... sucking like Vulcan's lifeless wang. It's weird. Yeah, and Deathfire was not a fun book, so it was really hard to get attached to these characters. Bad book. And then, of course, they were the main characters as well in Old Earth, which was phenomenal. Um, and that's where you got to know them more. But honestly, like, old Earth, characters. yeah, they were forgettable because it, it wasn't about the Salamanders. Like, it was about Eldrad and um, what the fuck is his name? Narek. Yeah, Narek. You have John storyline. Shadrach Medusa. Demon was fucking cool. Yeah, Shadrach Medusin's story was actually cool. Yeah. Like the Shadrach I mean, Medusin really, it was more Vulcan than like the actual Salamanders. The Salamanders are just kind of there. Yeah. So we've discussed this many times. Like, a lot of people hate how the Salamanders are written. And I would kind of agree with that. I think Vulcan has been written phenomenally throughout the entire series. The Salamanders. No one knows where Vulcan is, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's oh wait, no, guys. He's like, he's like on Terra. When when Vulcan is written about, it's good, but very seldomly <laughs> do we talk about his existence. Um, but the Salamanders themselves are always forgetful. They're always forgetful. It, like, not only are they forgetting about Vulcan, but even during the siege, no one's like, "Oh, what about those three Salamanders?" Graham, I feel like, just reached out a hand to Nick Kime. It's like, "All right, about some Salamanders for you, buddy." <laughs> yeah, I I won't. I feel like Saturnine would have been like a good book to bring Vulcan out instead of Dorn, Vulcan being the surprise factor. That would have been cool. So I hope whenever Vulcan is revealed to the traders, it's like a shock moment. Because if it's not, it's gonna be fucking lame for all the shit he's gone through and all the bullshit writing that's like they've just like forgot about him. He's just fucking nothing. It's a little racist. Like, give me, <laughs> let Vulcan thrive. God damn it. I would love to see. Uh, here's what I'm, this, here's what I'd hate to see. And I fear that this is going to be how oh, it no. is. We're going to get Vulcan here in a short story. And he's going to be revealed. And then we're not going to see him for the rest of the siege. I hope not. Does it, isn't he supposed to, like, I, I don't know if this is true or not. Like, doesn't he like defend like the lion skit or something? Isn't like his thing? Maybe I hope. Like he's got to defend something, right? That would be cool. He's... But I, <laughs> to my knowledge, I think this might be the only time we see Vulcan. <laughs> I'm gonna be so mad if this is it. Like what a waste of a Primarch. Yeah. Like at, you honestly could have just killed him. It would and it would have been better. Yeah, honestly, if you look through Vulcan's storyline and what he's there to accomplish, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, he armed Terra to explode. Yeah, and that's cool. not even an option what? for either side. Yeah. It, yeah, well, actually, like well, they could have <laughs> ended this a so, whole long time ago, but just yeah. virus bombed Terra and then blew it up with the nuke. Yeah. All right, cool, I'm Emperor now. So it's frustrating because one side is like, okay, obviously that means that the traders don't want to blow up Terra. So it makes it makes the whole bomb thing useful. But then the Emperor is like, instead of blowing up Terra, how about I go fight Horus on his flagship? <laughs> he's just blowing up Terra. You know what I mean? But he's like, no, that's not even an option for me, really. So it's like, they, that whole part of the story is useless in my opinion and on top of that they could have just fixed it with like a bomb <laughs> yeah like, and i'm even sure like the 40k storyline for it it's just like a random crutch that like why 
is this a thing? Like at the end of the day, Terra's a shithole. If it was gone, why would we give a shit? He doesn't even have water anymore. Yeah, I think like the the frustrating part to this is like that mechanism and that concept is kind of weak as a mechanism and concept. You literally have bombs that blow up planets. Like that is the thing that happens. There's so many different ways. We saw saying one is blow up like five just because they fucking smiled at him. <laughs> so, like we could have come up with another way to blow up Terra without making it the entire purpose of a primark because that makes him seem worthless. And it makes him seem even more worthless if you're like, he's there, but we're not going to talk. Hell, we could use virus bombs and it wouldn't even destroy the entire planet. We saw fucking Loken survive virus bomb. Right. They could have taken out 90% of resistance with virus bombs. Oh, sorry, the Aegis. The Aegis is up, so maybe not. The Aegis is so powerful. It's the most powerful thing in existence. It can fucking yeah. block light. You know, it would have been, I'll tell you what made what would have made more sense. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. Vulcan has to get to Terra because he created a device that starts the ages. That'd be cool. That'd be That'd way cooler. More sense. It would make more sense. It gives Vulcan a purpose. All of a sudden, the Aegis isn't some sort of mystical thing. Like, it had to be created. Vulcan had to get from point to point, or else they were screwed. Like, it would have made Vulcan important. It would have made a lot more sense why, like, the Eldar were like, you have to believe us that this is happening, yada, yada, yada. Or if not the Aegis, him building something that actually blocks the webway in the Terra. Yeah, him being like, a solution to that, because... The way they're making Instead it. Instead of him standing up. there fighting demons randomly, yeah. like at the door, like why doesn't he just make something? Like, or I don't know, bring in Dorna, bro, build a wall around it. Shut the door. Yeah, he did also. <laughs> no one ever understood how the door works. <laughs> That's the part that is I don't understand. Like, it's not like the Emperor, like. Oh, like was a walking one day and there was a fucking big ass door there and he just opened it like, oh shit this is the webway this is cool yeah like, this is something that's built like tear it down I don't know I, I'm i not a, actually I'm a scientist I have a degree that proves I'm a scientist but that's true <laughs> I the science I know doesn't make this make any sense <laughs> You, I would, if demon about to get through door don't <laughs> yeah all, all my science is in computer science psychology and geology there you go i almost have a geology major <laughs> or a minor <laughs> so strange hey man i had to i had to take some science classes and geology was easy it's a fun one rocks uh so yeah i think at the end of the day like the purpose for Vulcan doesn't make a lot of sense. It's frustrating that like he created a bomb because it's just, it's very weak as a device in the story. Cause it, it just, it's never going to be used. Yeah. And, and no one wants to use it. Or shit. It, like what if he made the emperor's sword instead? Like he's a fucking weapon maker. Like the, let him make sword, something cool. the throne, anything. Like, I'm frustrated that well, the, the throne's fucking story... stupid right now. Yeah, because it should be from Mars, but it's not. That and, like, why does him sitting on a chair stop a door from opening? Like, put some weights on the chair, maybe. I don't know. Put some weights on the chair. <laughs> Listen, I've seen Indiana Jones, okay? <laughs> I know how to get this thing to work. <laughs> Vulcan, how about you sit here so I can go fight things because I'm like, the emperor. If he's if the emperor is so strong, he can hold up the Aegis and block demon by sitting in a chair. Imagine if he stood off of the chair. That's what he could do. Stand. You saw that blood flowing. Like sitting, <laughs> sitting's the new smoking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's geez. killing himself. He's it, he's handicapping. I don't understand. Like. <laughs> You see, like, the dead, decrepit body of the Emperor in the 40 universe. Hey, man, how many steps do you get in <laughs> <laughs> If he just would have got more steps in, this wouldn't even be a problem. <laughs> You're killing yourself, man. <laughs> you got a work-from-home job, sedentary. 
Mm. You got to get out more. Yeah, that's that's the downfall for you. Loneliness is a killer. <laughs> Just stop dropping statistics. It'll improve your life by at least 10 years. I'm telling you what. <laughs> oh, man. So the salamanders are there. We also get a wolf pack. Now, this wolf pack was the same one in the Crimson King. Yeah. Whose wolf pack were they? The route, maybe? Well, these wolf packs were sent to each Primarch. Yep. Whose wolf pack was this? Yeah, Ferris has killed them. Um... I don't know. We have the wolf pack that was sent to the Raven Guard. The Raven Guard killed them. The wolf pack that was sent to the <laughs> oh, Alpha yeah. Legion. The Alpha <laughs> Legion killed them. The wolf pack that was sent to the Blood Angels. The Blood Angels killed them. <laughs> Actually, yeah, shit. <laughs> we don't Word know. Bearers, Word Bearers killed them. Yes, we do get the death of the wolf pack at the Word Bearers. Um, I'm assuming the wolf pack that went to Horus probably died. Yeah. And Are these a, Magnuses? Um, no, because they didn't. No, they sent the whole legion there. Yeah. <laughs> he got the rest of the pack. We know that it's not the wolf pack that went to Dorn, which would have made so much sense because that was like 17 stars something. Yeah. 20 star moon or something like that yeah like stupid dames yeah i that would have been a much smarter choice to use them i think because like they were going to dorn death guard i don't know i don't remember who they were supposed to be assigned to if they were assigned to anything or if it was just like we're part of the route by the way we are space wolves (laughs) rough rough Where's my leather? <laughs> Where's the chaps? Are you going to really the assless ones? I've been a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, all in all, when you get space wolves together in a room with salamanders, and everything becomes a metaphor, and they really want to go fight things with swords for honor in weird ways, and they talk a lot about their home worlds, and it's quite terrible there's a lot of dreams interpretations of dreams and visions and just a lot of everything is a metaphor yeah and everything's like fate based and like it's almost like butterfly effect where like oh like one thing from like years ago is what set this all off and it's like oh you mean a a statue breaking in a billion pieces and madness obsessing over how it landed it's like this how it all went went to shit that's weird yeah, or maybe or there maybe the flesh change. <laughs> maybe <laughs> that was a bigger problem. I don't know. I'm just maybe. I mean, I'm sure you know they could have figured that shit out. It's only they're the only ones that had that fucking problem. Or there's other psychers that do psycher shit. And they're like, oh, wait, that's a weird. Yeah, I just like there's some groups that I think are overly symbolic and the white scars are one of them but jacketai is not symbolic jacketai is just a fucking badass motherfucker yeah like yasugi was also a very well written character he didn't seem overly symbolic but like the salamanders and the space wolves nothing but symbolism and it's just it's a lot i want to think salamanders i just think death Yep. <laughs> I would be surprised if any salamander lived after this book. <laughs> I yeah, I mean I, I imagine all three of these guys die and it's just Vulcan again, being Vulcan. Yeah, probably. There's also Armin. Armin is here. He is trying to piece together the parts of Magnus. And one thing that is also incredibly confusing to me right now is they're not dust yet. No, apparently that's in 40k when that happens it's in the rmn's um omnibus 
That's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wish. No, that's like what I want to read. I do think like there are like definitely like stories I want to read there in our way that are like 40k related. Like I actually someone said this in the Tacticus Discord. That they'd like to see us get caught up in the lion storyline and argue with Major Kill, who's apparently like a big lion, lion fanboy. Just because we fucking hate him. And I don't know how anyone could be a goddamn lion fanboy, but I I'll get caught up on the lion lore just so I can shit on someone else. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but the lion's actually a terrible fucking the primer. worst fucking primer. <laughs> I I would rather too- have Lorgar as my prime mark in the final. Absolutely. I also think in his current storyline, isn't the whole thing like he came back and the entire like galaxy's fucked. And he's like, you know what we should do? Let's find those fallen people. Like one at a time. Let's take like a really long time and focus very specifically on these individual people. I have no idea. I thought he was supposed to be like <laughs> excuse me, like fucking shit up with for like Tyranids? Do the Tyranids no. look bad right now? You would think like you come back to life and the first thing you do is like, let's go to Gilliman and figure this shit out. But what he actually did it was like Well, he's like, I oh, mean, last time like Gilliman was in charge, like I kind of like fucked shit up. So <laughs> imagine being <laughs> Gilliman and finding out that the only other loyal brother you have alive is the lion. <laughs> he's like Son God. Of the- Fucking so one fighting three traitor, four <laughs> traitor primarchs. <laughs> Find a bunch of fucking demons and the goddamn lion. <laughs> yeah. We had someone in Discord link. They were doing a fan fiction on what would happen if the liar, lion be, was the traitor, the, the lion heresy. Um, and I was reading through some of it, and um, it definitely is interesting. I think like. It's always fun to speculate, like what would happen if so and so would be a traitor primer. No one follows. It's just the lion dicking around. Like, <laughs> like wait, he he's a traitor. Yeah, there, huh? A hundred <laughs> thought. There are so many primarchs that are like no one would follow them. I don't think a lot of people would follow the lion at the end of the day. Half his own legion doesn't follow him. <laughs> this is very true in this fan fiction he actually kills Luther before the emperor even arrives on Caliban that's that's fascinating yes so I mean it could have changed everything killing yeah. Luther and who knows how what, what that I agree with that actually I think a lot would change from that another thing that's interesting is in this fiction the lion and the the dark angels are actually the largest space marine chapter which we know and the current lore is not true at all like it's pretty far from true i think there's quite a few space marine chapters that are larger um well i mean heck we even the ultramarines and word bearers ultramarines word bearers i think even like the sons of horus yeah, they're probably decently large. Yeah, uh, the Alpha Legion is bigger than all of them. Yeah, because they have a billion operatives. <laughs> yeah, all over the place. Um, and I think if the Lion was given a larger legion, the, the only problem with, with the Lion Harris is really people wouldn't follow him. Like, he would have to fight everyone, and he, I think he would lose too quickly. He's his, his big, yeah. He is his biggest threat. Yeah. <laughs> But I would love to do maybe in the future specials um, in between volume 37 and 38 of the end of the death. Yeah, Talk I mean, about. honestly, I think it'd be kind of full, cool to like go like through like each Primarch and like if they were the, the first trader. Well, I mean, I guess technically yeah. Lorgar was the first trader, but we'll ignore that so far. Yeah. But we'd have to talk really specifically about like why they would betray the Emperor. Who would follow them or why? When they would betray the emperor? Some ways they might do it. I think it's interesting because I think if some like traitor primarchs, like for instance, if Magnus was like the arch traitor, 
I feel like he would be less successful than he I was to be loyal. I think like, if he was traitor, I think Jagatai would join him. I could probably. I could see Lorgar. Um, well, the thing is that my point is with Magnus, it's like if he's like the arch traitor, right? I feel like he would do. Oh, he would do dumb damage. shit. <laughs> he would do less damage to the imp- emperor and the the Imperium than when he was trying to be loyal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> so I feel like Magnus being traitor might actually be like a detriment to the, the traitor side. That's fair. The emperor would not be sidelined, I guess. Yeah, honestly, like. You, the emperor probably would have been better off if more Primarchs turned traitor. Like if the lion was an actual traitor, it would have been a lot easier to account for him being stupid. Yeah. <laughs> if Magnus, like day one, was traitor, I feel like it would be easy. You would be able to account for him being stupid. Yeah. But yeah, I think it would be a cool discussion. Maybe when we go through. Maybe every once in a while we do a Primark novel. We talk about a specific Primark and cover what would happen if they were in charge of the heresy. Yeah, that'd be fun. At least something fucking different. Yep. Anything else for Fury of Magnus that we haven't finished reading? Yeah, we haven't talked about a lot of it. It's a smaller book. Not a lot going on. Um, I'm excited to see how Vulcan plays a part, and I hope he continues to play a bigger part. Yeah, Um, I guess quickly since she's important on olivia if you didn't read vengeful spirit she makes no fucking sense to you honestly if you didn't read vengeful spirit first off i don't blame you but she's probably the only character that you wouldn't know about uh the salamanders i mean every salamander's always been fluff so it doesn't really matter probably Mm -hmm. olivia was a perpetual that was actually sent to guard moloch when the emperor went to go make the deals with the chaos gods to empower the primarchs, which actually doesn't make a lot of sense given the new war, but um, maybe they work together. Yeah, also confused on why there's a random gate just somewhere that leads into hell. And instead of like destroying it, she's like, yo, perpetual lady, you just watch that forever. I don't know. Seems like a missed opportunity just to blow it up. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of strange, but that's where she's from. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's all the characters. It's all the ones that were covered that we know of. <laughs> that we know of. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's it, guys. We'll see you next week for our review slash more bullshit because this is what we are now, guys. GW broke us. <laughs> my spirit has been broken what's next mortis after this next is mortis so here right. so we'll do mortis yeah so I mean, when, we, when we start previewing mortis it'll we'll, might be more lively or we'll be just brain dead mm-hmm. we'll a, see. Little bit, a little bit it's been this is like book 70 close we're, almost, to... we're almost on year three of running this podcast and We've never had a break, so <laughs> it's been rough. Also, randomly, um, we have lodge tokens. We do have lodge tokens. I should have brought one up here. More to come. Great shout out. More to come. We might have cooler ones coming. I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll let you all on the deets later. From the Discord. That's where you find all the deets. Find that pinned to the Twitter at Heresy Lodge. Email us at the Heresy Lodge at gmail.com. Go on YouTube at the Heresy Lodge. Fire merch. Gavin needs a house in Indiana, and he can't do it without you. You can play some Warhammer finally. Yeah, that'd be fucking great because, man, my armies are dust. Well, technically, your armies are dust, but mine aren't. Mine are actually dust. Yes. All right, guys. Have a good one.